Senator Brossi. Thanks, Mr. Chairman, I'd like just to follow up on some of your questioning that you've been doing in terms of manufacturing and materials and the important things there, because last year this department announced it would make a $200 million grant to Microvast. Uh, at the time, more than 60% of Microvast's revenue came from China when you made the announcement, uh, only 1% from the United States. In discussing its products, a Microvast CEO bragged that I'm honored that this is a technology we developed here in China. Um, in fact, and I have a, it's a sign here, the, the local branch of the Chinese Communist Party successfully recruited Microvast CEO to return from the United States to China under their talent program. They said, yeah, he returned from the United States with $3 million. They have the program to attract people from China back to China who have been in the United States. The, uh, he is, the CEO is a participant in the Chinese Communist Party talent program. You can see the hammer and the sickle up there in yellow. And the Department of Energy is announcing a big grant to them. So in February, at this same table, uh, Deputy Secretary Turk told our committee that despite the grant announcement, that despite the hammer and sickle, in spite of that, that no final decision has yet been made on funding the Chinese-backed company. Uh, can you assure us today that you will not go forward with $200 million, an award to Microvast or any other company under such significant Chinese influence? I can assure you that we are very vigilant about making sure that no taxpayer dollars goes to any state-owned enterprise or Chinese-influenced company. That particular award is still under negotiation, and we'll get back to you on the final conclusions on that. That is, uh, it was a selection, by the way. It wasn't an award. As with all DOE awards uh, that eventually get uh, money, they are started out as a selection, and they go through a negotiation process. And all awardees are told that nothing is final until the vetting and the negotiation is over. You're probably aware, I think he may have mentioned, that we have instituted, as a result of the bipartisan infrastructure law and the IRA and the new funding coming through the department. We've instituted a whole uh, new vetting process for these companies, including in partnership and guided by CFIUS, so that we can protect taxpayer dollars uh, both now and into the future. Uh, and in terms of not just evaluation, perhaps when you make the announcement, that ought to be under investigation, too, by your own group to say, we're not going to announce something that could cause this sort of concern by members on both sides of the aisle on this committee. Moving on to the, uh, another issue. Uh, over the past few years, the Biden administration has aggressively pushed back against the idea that COVID uh, could have emerged from the Wuhan lab. But earlier this year, scientists at your department, the Department of Energy, determined that a lab leak is most likely the origin of COVID-19. Um, did you agree with your own agency experts that COVID was most likely leaked from the Chinese lab? Uh, the uh, intelligence community found that with low confidence because there is conflicting reports and a conflicting op opinion within the IC community. Um, so, Well, the president signed into law a bipartisan bill directing the administration to declassify information on COVID's origin. So will you make public the relevant information supporting the department scientists finding that COVID originated from a lab leak? Yes, as soon as the Director of National Intelligence makes the determination that our sources and methods are protected. Because you agree that this American people do have a right to the information. I know that Congress passed a law and the President signed it. Okay. The uh, auto efficiency. The Department is right in the middle of the EPA's attempt to regulate the internal combustion engine out of existence. The administration won't stop until everything's electrified. Uh, we'll then be more dependent on China and Russia for materials that go into batteries and solar panels and wind turbines. So do you think electric vehicles really are the right choice for every driver? And why is the Biden administration trying to ban cars and trucks the people of Wyoming need to drive to go from point A to point B in our large state? Uh, the administration is not trying to ban anything. The administration, through the EPA, is trying to reduce emissions. And the emissions um, can be best reduced through electrification. That might be through a battery electrification. That might be through fuel cell. But there is not an, any effort to ban vehicles, internal combustion engine vehicles. We do know that's the largest source, of course, of greenhouse gas emissions, providing 30% of the source of emissions. And we all, uh, I think everyone agrees that we need to, as a nation, continue to move toward efficiency. And that rule will do this. 
So price of gasoline, I know you're very familiar with the price of gasoline. It's uh, average price today, 368. It's up about 25 cents a gallon from a, from a month ago. So leading up to the election, uh, you as the Secretary of Energy and this administration released massive amounts of oil, over a million barrels a day from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, so that the reserve, our emergency supply, is now at the lowest level since 1984, and gas prices are on the way up. Uh, what, what's your next trick to try to deal with the relief that the American people need as the, tri as the price goes up? It is clear that supply, the amount of oil produced, affects how much people pay at the pump. The challenge is that oil is traded on a global market. And so when Russia invades Ukraine and barrels are pulled off, there's a supply disruption, which is why the president wanted to use, in the case of war, the Strategic Petroleum Reserve to stabilize and reduce prices, but really to provide the supply necessary to stabilize the global market as well. That was successful. The latest uh, increase is a result of OPEC's move to, to uh, pinch supply, uh, to increase uh, their uh, funds, their, their budgets. Um, it is another reason why it is important to continue to accelerate, honestly, the move to electrification so that we can have, uh, we don't have to rely on volatile sources. And also, the President has called upon our domestic oil and gas producers to continue to increase supply as well. Both need to happen. So then your, one of your recommendations is to actually drill more American oil, build more pipelines, make it easier and cheaper to produce American oil. We have called upon the oil and gas industry to increase production so that people are not hurt at the same time as we want to accelerate toward clean energy solutions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Kent. Hey, before you click on the next video, if y'all could do me a big favor and hit that like button. The algorithm loves it, and so do I, because it helps promote these videos and get the message out about what our government has been doing. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications, because every time I put out a video, you want to know about it, right? Thanks again, and have a good one. See you on the next one. Peace.